What's going on money geeks Mr. V here welcome to another video guys um, in today's video we are going to be taking a look at Palantir um, which is a software company that provides um, data integration and analytics for mostly government agencies um, they do have some uh, private companies that they work with but majority of the business comes from government agencies so we're going to take a deeper look and uh, kind of discuss what we think about uh, this guy is going public uh, but before we get started guys if you're new to the channel we'll talk about how to earn money how to save money how to invest and build wealth so if that's something that interests you go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss out on new content so uh, there's been a ton in the news lately about Palantir going public. Um, so like, hey, let's cover this because they are due to start trading, I think, um, on September 30th. So I wanted to kind of go in depth and make sure that we cover and see if this would be an opportunity to buy um, just on the get go or kind of wait and see what happens if there's any pullback before we can jump in. Um, so we're going to take a look at some of the products of the company. Uh, uh, first and foremost, the, just the business model for this company, um, it's, it's intriguing. Uh, basically, what they do, again, with government agencies, you're talking like the, the army and um, some other uh, government agencies. So they provide uh, solutions that really help uh, decision making. So uh, you know, they, they collect data, they analyze the data. Um, most data contain information. They're able to extract that information and, and give it back to the users so they can make um, really tough decisions, especially even like armies out in, in, in the field. You know, for them, it's, it's about, hey, should we take that, that strike or should we not do it? Or, you know, should we attack or should we, should we wait? So there's like a lot of decisions that are based on these. And uh, these guys have actually come under um, you know, a little bit of pushback from people that think uh, helping the, the the U.S. government or agencies like the Army is it's bad for business. But um, I'm, I was intrigued by the response from their CEO who says, hey, if you are somebody that thinks what they are doing for the Army is bad and then don't invest in our company, which to me, that was that takes a lot of guts to do that to, to, or to say that, which is um, I, I thought. I mean, as a CEO, sometimes you have to put your foot on the ground and uh, really stand for what you believe. So, uh, so we're going to take a look about some of their products here. They have two main product categories, uh, Palantir, this Gotham, uh, Gotham, and then they have Palantir uh, Foundry. So um, just going to bring that up here and just go through it. So um, again, these are, I'm not going to go into every single one of this product because I, I, I don't really care for I uh, just want to know that it does provide a solution um, and, and somebody needs that solution. I, I, at this particular time, the U.S. government is one that is benefiting from that from the solution. Again, like I said, they do have other, um, you know, private companies that they work with. But this is the bulk of their revenue comes from from these uh, U.S. Con uh, government contracts. So. Uh, again, this is solutions uh, areas where they, they work um, in AI, um, auto racing, cyber, financial insurance, uh, manufacturing, um, automotive defense. Again, like I said, that's huge for them. What they do is they actually mine that data uh, using their, their different um, softwares. And then in turn, uh, whoever is using that data and that can make decisions by themselves. So you buy their software and then collect your data. So they don't, they, they're not responsible for you for actually holding that data. You, but you can use the software to do that, which is um, to me, it's a little bit better than what you would see um, with all these other um, software companies. So um, I know I, I'm giving you all this, this uh, history and telling you a little bit about the company, but uh, for the most part, people are interested in, all right, tell me, you know, what about your financials and, and, and tell me all the good stuff about um, the company. Um, one other thing before we actually jump into the financials about the company that I think is um, kind of unique is the way um, the, the company is structured uh, as far as, uh, you know, who has power, Peter Thiel which you probably see his name everywhere, along with two of the company's um, other co-founders, uh, Stephen Cohen and, and, and Cap. Um, 
they control about 50 um no actually 50 percent yeah 49.99 um, percent of voting shares for uh the foreseeable future of the company so i i think that's huge so you have uh just a handful of people controlling half of the company so um i don't know where the tiebreaker comes from but that is um something to be worried about um so I just kind of want to put that out there so you know. And then one other thing that this is uh, this company is doing is the fact that they they're going public uh, through uh, what I call a, a non-traditional way in in the sense that they're not pricing their IPO, right? So they're just uh, putting this thing out there um, and and letting the open market uh, determine uh, investors who determine how much they want to they want to pay. Um, if you look at companies like uh, Slack Technology and um, and uh, Spotify, that's how they went public. Just what you call direct listing. So they go direct to the consumer and have them determine uh, what the the price of you know their the shares would be, which is awesome. So um, this is their SEC filing here that we can actually take a look at um, and just kind of go through it and see. Uh, some of the, the details about their their finances and um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna just I'm gonna just cut straight to the point here and uh, prevent you guys from the the nuances of their finances. So again, um, this is a company that was founded in 2003, um, and, and I mean they've sort of been in business uh, for that long. Um, so the ticket symbol anticipated it's gonna be PLTR for those of you that are interested. Um, and then uh, li listed day is going to be uh, September 30th, just so you know exactly what to expect. Again, this is a brief overview of what the company has been able to do um, over the years. So you can read through this um, for your own interest. As of right now, they currently do business with uh, um, you know 36 industries in more than 150 countries. I think that's <laughs> that's huge exposure. Um, in terms of what they've been able to do, to do generated 742.6 million in revenue in 2019. That's that sounds good, reflecting an increase of about 25% from uh, the revenue in in 2018, which is uh, awesome. Which that was 595.4 million. So uh, again, you can look at some of the numbers here. It kind of sound in terms of. Uh, revenue it sounds like this company is doing great um again this is uh where you know kind of the industries that they have been able to to get into so if you see the the key here government and then commercial so government is the the, the, the black dots that you see and then commercial is the blue dots that you see um so i mean from it looks like they work across um all industries so law enforcement to defense to intelligence to energy uh, banking, healthcare, uh, justice, I mean, everywhere, name it, they have customers. Again, like I said, um, at least over 50% of their revenue comes from government contracts. So um, I think during their presentation call, the, you know, the, the chairman was really strong at pointing the fact that their goal is to diversify and get some of their revenue uh, from the, the commercial sector or private sector some will call it um so that way they're not uh, super tied to just uh, just government contracts because um in a year where government contracts are really hard to to combat um they would definitely uh, you know revenue would drop if they were to stick just with that so going into commercial uh um or private companies and working with them and increasing their revenue from that perspective i think is is really helpful again uh, about your financials um when i looked at this this company uh this, and here's here is where it for any investor this should scare you a little bit um so this company has not really turned a profit since it was founded. I mean, this is that's just looking at the financials. Um, it, the revenue looks good, um, but again, if you're looking like, hey, is, is this a profitable company as of right now? I would say the answer is no. Do they stand a chance of becoming profitable? Yes. Um, I dug through the financials. Um, um pretty deep and i didn't see anything look at the revenue um over time revenue has been going up uh, but there's so many reasons why you can explain um the fact that their revenue 
um, is going up, but uh, they're not being profitable because they can, you know, again, as a software company, um, their goal is to continue to innovate um, R&D and just continue to make sure that, you know, they, they're keeping their customers happy in, in just breaking new grounds. Uh, so it, it, bottom line, reinvesting that money into the company. Um, and that's why we're not seeing any uh, profit just yet. Again, there are a lot of the tech companies that you see out there, um, when they go public, that's usually the case. They don't really show any sort of profit. Um, so, uh, which I think that it, you know, Palantir is no exception. So, um, again, average revenue of top 20 customers. Uh, so you can see here, um, 2019, you're talking about 24.8 million. Um, so, uh, see 2020 is still, um, I think they've, they've had some issues here. They'll probably have some issues with 2020 just because of, uh, uh, COVID and stuff like that, but we'll see um, at the end. So cumulative spending on research and development. So just to say like R&D. So if you see that, well, the reason why these guys are probably not showing any sort of profit um, is because they're putting a ton of money into research and development. So you can see here, um, year over year from 2008, uh, which is $10 million to 2019, $1.5 billion in, in research and development. So to me, that's huge. And, and I feel like this is a company that doesn't want to just uh, be out there, be average. The fact that they're taking that money instead of uh, so much focusing on red, on uh, profit, they're focusing on growing the company and reinvesting that money back in the company says a lot about them. So again, um, just kind of in-depth look at their financials here. Um, again, like I said, they haven't really um, turned a, 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 an annual profit since the company was founded. They haven't turned an annual profit. So um, again, ticket symbol is PLTR and listed date is going to be um, uh, September 30th. So uh, based on all this information, uh, my personal take on Palantir is that it's, I mean, it's a company that has um, huge potential. Um, especially the fact that they are um, working with government uh, agencies and, and government contracts, and, and the fact that they they're also looking at diversifying, um, you know, into uh, the commercial sec sector and and work with private companies, which is good. So, um, if, if if again some of the things that I, I look at keenly that I said was, um, but I see a little bit of a, a problem would be the fact that the power structure of the company right now is a little bit scary because you have a handful of guys that own about 50% of the company um, and have that voting right. So um, where who breaks the tie if there was something that needed to be voted upon and um, it, it was actually tied. So that is um, kind of a red flag. Um, the fact that the company hasn't turned an annual profit since it was founded in 2003 three um again that is not so much of a red flag if you were more or uh, of a, an accounting guy you would say don't touch this company because that is that looks bad but if you are uh, somebody that understand um technology and understand how these tech companies operate um i mean I, I work in the tech space and i've been investing in tech companies for a long time so i understand what it takes for them to start turning a profit so if they're reinvesting in a company that is a company that really focuses on growth uh, and, and and so not just income which is uh in this case their their the main goal is growth so i understand that um and so i would definitely be 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 watching this one um right out of the gate i'll see um what the the ipo finally price at as soon as it gets out of the gate and then i might um uh, pick up some shares in there um if possibly day trade it and then um uh, for for long term I am definitely going to start looking at, um, you know, picking something. If it is picking a few more, if there's a pullback, um, I'll pick it up and, and and just hold it and see what happens there. So, um, yeah, to me, this would be uh, watch out of the gate since the IPO is not priced. Um, again, it's a direct listing. So watch out of the gate, see what it comes out at um, and see how it's, uh, you know people are responding. Um, again, be smart with this. But for long term, I see uh, a really good long term potential with this uh, with this company, and definitely looking forward to to owning some few shares there. So again, let me know in the comment section. What do you think about Palantir? Do you think? Oh my goodness, this company. 
um, has not turned a profit uh, or annual profit since it was founded I'm not touching it or do you think you see some potential here or even some people which you, they invest uh, you know with what they care the issues they care about the fact that they're helping the government and people complain about it um, do you think that's an issue for you to not want to invest in a company let me know in the comment section also if you're looking to get started with investing and you don't know where to start we bought a good platform where you can get started with and uh, if you sign up and deposit a hundred dollars you get Get, um, two free stocks right now they have that promotion going on to you get two free stocks um, in your account and as always guys stay motivated